Okay, so hopefully third time is a charm. <clears throat> here we go. I'm going to try one more time to get our video to go. Good morning, and I'm glad you're here today. We will be doing some learning this week about a different topic. Last week was protagonist, antagonist, and this week we're going to be doing something different. First of all, I would like for you to get out two pieces of paper. You need two pieces of paper, and let me show you what we're going to be doing with those two pieces of paper. <clears throat> All right, so first you need to get your piece of paper out and we're going to be making a word nerd journal. Now, if you have your notebook from school, a notebook would work. If you have a notebook at home, that would also work. <clears throat> that would be fine to use either one of those things. So you can see here, word nerd words, and then we're gonna be writing this week's words. So let's go ahead and look at what our words are and I'll help you get your word nerd paper ready. Okay, so our first word is privilege. And you'll see that we have written privilege here. Next, you need to put the part of speech, a definition, a sentence, your own, not the one from the dictionary or on your phone. Then write a synonym and an antonym. <clears throat> okay, so that's your first word, privilege. Notice I highlighted it. You can do that if you have a highlighter at home. And then our second word for this week, whoops, is impairment. Notice there's an ear on here. <clears throat> okay, we'll be hearing about that today in our story. So put that on your paper, impairment, and then you're gonna write the part of speech, the definition, a sentence, and a synonym and an antonym if there is one, okay? So that's what we're gonna be doing for our first two words this week, and that's for today. So we're gonna be keeping track of our words like we did at school <clears throat> for the next couple of weeks. So if, like I said, if you have a notebook, you can put it in your notebook. If you have paper, just put it on paper. The next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking about our new skill for this little week. Last week was protagonist, antagonist. This week's skill is figurative language. Okay, so there is some examples of figurative language and today we are going to be talking about simile and metaphor. Simile and metaphor, okay? So a simile is a figure of speech involving the comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind. And I put a big S down here because S is what simile starts with. And it's also what same or similar starts with. So it just means that you're going to be comparing things <coughs> to one another. And let's see what an example looks like. So here we have examples of similes comparing two things and the key to knowing that it is a simile and not a metaphor is it uses the words like or as. So we have here a picture of a lion and it says brave as a lion. They use the word as which makes it a simile. They're comparing to how brave something is to how brave a lion is. Here's our S over here again telling us that same similes, similar items. Okay, red like a rose. Here is the red rose. They want you to compare something that is red like a rose and notice they have the word like on there. Okay, so those are some examples of similes. We're gonna be using those in a minute. Now, a metaphor, the only difference between a metaphor and a simile is, is a metaphor does not use the words like or as. You are still comparing two things. Um, but you are not using the words like or as. So if someone was really upset, you might say, her temper is a volcano. And, oh, sorry, I messed it up. Not is, her temper was a volcano. Okay, so I guess you could say is her temper was a volcano or her temper is a volcano. And what that is, is you're not using like or as. So you're not saying it was like a volcano or it is, it's, it's just is. So if you say her temper is a volcano, you're saying her temper is explosive, it's loud, it's scary, maybe like a volcano, or her temper was a volcano. You're comparing her temper to a volcano. So that's the only difference between a metaphor and a simile is the words like or as. You're going to use like or as if it's a simile, not like or as if it is a metaphor. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a little assignment with that. So you need a piece of paper. <clears throat> Let me switch this. It doesn't have to be, um, it does not have to be lined paper. It can be white paper, whatever paper you have. And then we're gonna make a trifold, which means three parts, three equal parts. So you just take your paper and lay it down horizontally, fold one side in like this, 
and then you can flip it over and fold the other side in like this and then when you open it it's an accordion and you have three equal pieces the lines divided into three equal pieces and here is what we are going to be putting on our paper today this side is going to be the simile paper that is not smiles spelled incorrectly at similes and then you are going to have your first sentence which says blank is was as brave as a lion so you can use is for present tense was for past tense you're going to find something that you can compare to as brave as a lion okay and then blank is or was red like a rose you have to think of something to put in the blank that was red like a rose and this one goes with our story Harvey is mean like so what does he mean like all right that's on your one side then we're gonna flip it and the back side we're gonna do metaphors so there will be no words like or as so the first one says Harvey's temper was a compare his temper to something explosive or scary laughter is think of something funny my bedroom is and you can think of something maybe messy I'm not sure maybe your bedroom's messy maybe it's not so that's the side for metaphors and notice we did not use like or as we used was or is no like or as okay and that's a metaphor and a simile so that's what we're doing for our paper today let me put our phone up here Let's see if I can get it to stay oh, there we go all right so I'm gonna be reading out a Darth paper today uh, Darth paper strikes back and last week the chapter we ended with murky wanted to know where Yoda came from and origami Yoda told him where he came from and he whispered in his ear and he didn't tell anybody because he promised he promised he would keep it oh my he promised he would keep it a secret okay so our chapter today is called origami Yoda and the miracle cure by Caroline Caroline is the pencil girl from origami Yoda and she is the girl that Dwight goes to the dance with and is dancing with and everybody's surprised. So that is who Caroline is. And this is her letter to the school board about Dwight to try to get them to change their minds about Dwight. Dear school board members, I am a student at Tippett Academy now, but last year I was at Macquarie Middle School and I had the wonderful privilege of meeting Dwight Thorpe and becoming best friends with him. He helped me deal with a bully problem then and he has helped me deal with a different problem this year at my new school. I no longer attend Macquarie Middle School. I attend Tippett Academy. Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties. My thing is sliding. Okay, there we go. There is a lot of understanding our differences at my new school. That would be fine, but since I'm the one who's different, it's a big pain in my butt. So, I have several hearing, I have several reasons for it being a pain in my butt. See, I have a severe hearing impairment. My, audi audi blah, 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 blah. My audiologist calls it profoundly deaf, but that is different from being completely deaf. I can hear a lot of stuff with my hearing aids and I can read lips like a ninja. I don't mean that ninjas read lips. I just mean that I'm fast and very good at it. Anyway, I can get along just fine without any special treatment and I didn't get any at McQuarrie Middle School. People were just used to me and nobody had a big problem with it. And here is the ninja. Whoa. Everybody was so busy trying to show me that they understood my differences at my new school that I never got a chance to be normal. And some of them had taken a sign language class, so they kept signing at me. People, I don't even know how to read sign language and I don't know sign language. I kept telling them that I read lips and they just kept waving their fingers at me in my face. Worst of all, some of them were practically fighting over who was going to be my friend, mostly just to show everybody else that they were friends with someone who was different. Well, I got sick of it quick, and I told Dwight about it when I called him that night. In case you were wondering, I can talk on the phone. If it has a volume setting, I can turn up. I still have trouble understanding some people, but I can understand Dwight pretty good. Dwight, why don't you ask or why don't you ask Origami Yoda? Me. Come on, Dwight, just tell me what to do. You don't have to do the Origami Yoda thing for me, Dwight. But I don't know what you should do. However, I think Origami Yoda does. Me. Are you joking? Dwight. No. You really need to ask Origami Yoda. 
Me? Over the phone? I don't think that would work. He needs to talk to you in person. Me. All right. Can your mom drive you over to Wendy's? I'll meet you there. So we met at Wendy's. Every once in a while, we do meet there when we don't get to see each other at school anymore. My dad calls these dates, but they're not really. Well, not exactly. Anyway, at Wendy's, Dwight gets the kid's meal, and I get a Frosty and a salad. As soon as we sit down, Origami Yoda says, A miracle cure you have. Tell them you should. But there is no miracle cure, I say. My audiologist says, A cure you need not. Interrupted. Tell them just. What does he mean? I should just tell them I'm cured? Yeah, I think so. Dwight said from under the table. Have you seen this periscope? This is the coolest kids mill toy. I can see you. Then he held up Origami Yoda again. Band-Aids, you will need. When I go to school on Monday, the first person I ran into was Willow. Hi, Caroline, she shouted at me. You don't have to shout at me anymore, I told her. My surgery was a total success. I pointed to the two Band-Aids on my forehead. What? She asked, shh, that hurts my ears, I said. My hearing is way above average now. Really? She said. It was so much easier for me to read her lips when she wasn't shouting and talking in drawn out syllables. Yeah, I'm not deaf anymore. But you're still wearing hearing aids. She said this sort of hopefully, like she was hoping I was still a little bit different so she could understand me. Yeah, my doctor says I need to leave them in for a while or my ears are going to grow back funny, I told her. This made no sense, of course, but neither did shouting at me and she had been doing that for three weeks. Some people like Willow just stopped bugging me so much, but a couple of them like Naomi and Emily, they turned out to be actual friends. I hadn't even realized that before. True, I don't always understand everything people say, but now I know who is actually worth listening to and who I can just pretend I am paying attention to. So as you can see, Dwight and Origami Yoda really do help people. And if you kick Dwight out of school, he won't be able to do that anymore. He is an awesome guy. Harvey's comment. Jeez, can you imagine being out in public with Dwight and having him wave that thing around while doing the world's worst Yoda impression? Now that's just embarrassing. My comment, Tommy. First of all, you're just as embarrassing with your Darth paper as he is with his Yoda. The fact that you do the voice better is actually more embarrassing. Second of all, you once again miss the whole point of the story. And then this says, another hot date with Dwight. And here's the periscope. <laughs> okay, so that's a really cool chapter they're trying to tell you. Um that she doesn't, Caroline's trying to say she doesn't really want to be treated differently. She just wants to be treated normal like everybody else. And the kids just won't listen to her because they want to be special because she's supposedly different and they're being nice to her. So she was just trying to tell the school board that Dwight helped her out with that situation and helped her figure out a good way to get them to quit, quit treating her different by pretending she had surgery, which she didn't. Um, so that was a really neat chapter. Hope you heard your two words in there, impairment and privilege. All right, so let's talk about our factor cred for today. It says the average smartphone user answers or returns an unexpected phone call twice as fast as they respond to a text. So they're asking, do people actually return an unexpected phone call quicker or do they respond to a text quicker? So that's, you gotta decide if that's factor crud today. Now, today is actually National Dolphin Day, which is really cool. Let me put this right here for a second. And I'm wearing my sweater today. I don't know if you saw that, because it's freezing cold, which I happen to love because I'm from Minnesota. Most people don't like that though. Okay, so um, we're going to watch a little video because it is National Dolphin Day. Um, dolphins are super intelligent mammals. Yes, they swim in the ocean. They are not fish, they are mammals. They have live babies. Um, they breathe with lungs, so they have to come up for air. Um, anyway, so they're highly intelligent. They're very um, smart and can be taught many different tricks. 
in the wild. Um, scientists like to study them for many different ways to help people and to um, just see how intelligent they are. There's lots of experiments out there that scientists are using to um, discover how intelligent dolphins actually are. And we're gonna watch a little tiny video about that, just a little bit. And most people know about the bottlenose dolphin. This is, first one's gonna be the spinner dolphin. So we'll flip this around. Sorry, my TV's not working, but the cord is not working, so we have to use the laptop. Here we go. That's a big old jump up in the air. Look at that, man, boom. Be cool if we could do that off a high dive. Amazing. It says the spinner dolphin is a true athlete of the seas. Pretty, aren't they? Swimming in their pod. It says, why do they spin? So they want to know. So scientists have some theories as to why spinner dolphins actually spin like that. One is to communicate. Let's see right here. To communicate with one another. One is to express emotions. So maybe that tells, they're saying how happy they are, how excited they are energetic, could be all kinds of things for their emotions. And then one is to rid themselves of parasites. So they think maybe they jump out of the water to make the parasites come off of their bodies. Look at that though, so beautiful, just beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, so that is um, a little bit about dolphins. I would love for you to, with your homework today, you're going to be doing your two words on your word paper, gonna be doing your metaphors and your similes, and also on each one of these, the reasons we left the boxes so big is because I want you to do an illustration, which means a drawing that matches your sentence. You can illustrate each one of these. That's why the boxes are big enough for you to put an illustration in there. Now, um, those are your two homework assignments. I would love it if you um, watched some dolphin videos today or figured some things out about dolphins. If you find out a really cool, interesting fact, you know how much I love to hear about those. Um, please send me that today in your video or snap a picture of it, however you wanna do that. And I love you, and I hope you have a good day. And remember, kindness is a language everyone can hear. Bye.